Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Have you ever heard of mean, median, and mode? Well, these are examples of a concept called measures of central tendency in statistics. A measure of central tendency is a kind of middle or representative number for what is typical in a data set. Three such measures are mean, median, and mode, and we're going to discuss one of these in this video. Let's talk about the median. The median is a number that divides a data set into two parts, with half the numbers below the median and half above it. Unlike the mean, which can be distorted by one uncharacteristically large or small number in a data set, the median is not affected by extreme values. To find the median of a group of items, the first thing you need to do is rank the items. That means put them in numerical order. If the number of items is odd, then the median is the middle item on the list. For example, the median of 246 is 4. If the number of items is even, then the median is the mean of the two middle numbers. For example, in the set 3579, there are four data values. 5 and 7 are in the middle, so we take the mean of the two. 5 plus 7 over 2 is 12 over 2, which is 6. In order to come up with a method that works, whether you have an odd number of items or an even number of items, we're going to refer to the position of the median in the set. In this list of three data values, position two is in the middle. In this list of four data values, we'll say position two and a half is in the middle. So let's look at 10 students in a math class who are polled as to the number of siblings in their individual families and the results were 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 6, 3, 3, 4, and 2. We're going to find the median number of siblings for the 10 students. First, we have to rank the data, so we have to put them in numerical order. I've done this here. Now, there were 10 students polled, so I have 10 data values, which is an even number. Remember, the median needs to be in a position such that half of the data values are below and half are above. So we're going to look at the five and a half position where five of the data values are below and five are above. So the median is gonna be the mean of the two values on either side. Two plus three divided by two is gonna be 2.5. So 2.5 is the median number of siblings. Notice that in this list of 10 data values, we're looking at the five and a half position. You can get 5.5 by adding 10 plus one and dividing by two. 10 being the number of data values, and this will work in general. In a list of n data values, the position of the median is always going to be n plus 1 over 2. Now remember, the number of data values is not always given to you. It might be you have to figure it out by adding up the frequencies, and that's what sigma f means. So if you're given n, just add n plus 1 over 2. And if you're given the frequencies of the data items, add those up to find n, and then add 1 and divide by 2. Notice that this is not a formula for the median. This only gives us the position of the median, and we still have to go find the median in the data set. Let's look at finding the median of a frequency distribution. The first thing we need to do is to find the position of the median among the data. For that, we need n plus 1 over 2, but we don't have n. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up the frequencies. If you add 4, 3, 2, 6, and 8, you're going to get 23. That is n. 23 plus 1 over 2 is going to be 24 over 2, which is 12. So we know that the median is in the 12th position among the data. But when we're given the data in a frequency distribution, how do we find the 12th position? I'm going to add a column to the frequency distribution to summarize what the positions are for each data value. For example, the data value one occurs four times. So it's gonna be in the first, second, third, and fourth positions. The data value two occurs three times. So that's gonna be in the fifth, sixth, and seventh positions. The data value three occurs two times. If you add seven and two, you get the ninth position. So that's one way of skipping to the fact that the third position the data value three will be in the eighth through ninth position. If you add nine to six, you get the 15th position. So the data value four, which occurs six times, is going to be in the 10th through 15th positions. If you add 15 to eight, 
you're going to get 23. So the date of value 5 is in the 16th through 23rd position, which makes sense because we know there were 23 data items in the set. So now we just look for the data value that's in the 12th position. Well, that's going to be the data value 4 because it's in the 10th through 15th positions. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.